Hey, hi, hello. What are you up to? This is the Aloha Bro Hop Podcast. I am your host, John Cozy. And over here, we got the other host. Ben. Oh, I didn't really. I thought you oh were going to say my name. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> gotta so be that, shitting me. So that's Ben. He's like, hell, oh, he's going to introduce me. I'm going to be like, what's up to the camera? Mm. No. Man, you fucking failed. That's I'm going to have to and, say um, it to myself. All right, cool. Dead I'm not to swear on this shit. Yeah, you can swear over the fuck. Oh, fuck. I love that you asked the question. Well, I don't know. Swear. I don't know. It's not my fucking pod show. I know, but is it's it a pod show or showcast or fucking pod. No, no, but I'm still you trying to do, do the... a podcast. I do you know it's a podcast. I haven't done the podcast in months, dude. We've been busy, all right? I don't give a fuck. Okay, fucker. Still trying to do the intro here. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> and, um, dead. well, Kevin Qualified's not here because he's out, like, working and making tacos, but we got two special guests in the studio right now or the patio. We can call it a studio because there's mics in here. We got my homie Tron. Thug life. And is that a good thing? I'm TJ. Say thug life. <laughs> I'm so not thug. Yay. Hold, hold the mic Sorry, to your face. Oh, I'm so not thug. I was drinking <laughs> one. And they are part of this um, little DJ group I'm a part of called The Astronauts by Night. Woo-woo. We play yeah. trans and other pew, stuff. Pew. Things. Pew, pew. Things of the such. And today we are brought to you by Greenleaf Check. What is Greenleaf Check, you ask? What is Greenleaf Check? Fuck if I know, but I got this website open so I can tell you guys really easy. <laughs> Greenleaf Check is a collective of creative group. No, I'm reading that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> did you make this shit? Yeah, I did. I wrote this. <laughs> Do you want me to read it? Do you want me to no, read it? No, I got it? it. The Greenleaf Check is a creative group of like-minded individuals who share a common purpose to create unadulterated <laughs> vehicles of self-expression through various art forms with a focus in aural. Did I say that right? Aural. aural. Yes. Aural and visual stimuli. What is aural and visual stimuli? Audio and shit you see. Boom. Yep. Okay. Well, aural specifically is spoken. Is it? Every yes. time you guys say that, I think you guys say oral. No, oral, well, it has to do with your mouth, right? Yo. Or, oral has to do oral. with mouth. Oral has to do with spoken. Spoken or like... So, it has to be, so, so, the or, so oral is something with your mouth. It's, it's oral. Either way, they're both done with your mouth. <laughs> yes, that's exactly my point. <laughs> different meanings. <laughs> we don't know words, guys. I do, apparently. I had no a one very else good does. education, guys. I... <laughs> So yeah, check that out on greenleafcheck.com. We provide a bunch of on like online content such as um, music mix podcasts. We throw shows, parties and stuff in Hawaii. If you're out here in Hawaii, you can check out the website to see when's the next thing we doing. When's the next thing we doing? And yeah. Cool. So what's up guys? Ben, what's going on with you? Uh not a lot. I just got a new vape here. I got a box now. Uh, I'm not gonna say the name because I don't wanna like give away free advertising or whatever. Yeah. I'm not going to just name check stuff, but it's a really nice box. I'm using a new uh, RDA uh, rebuildable drip atomizer, and it's actually gotten me away from cigarettes a lot more than my old one did. Yeah, it seems like there's like a lot of positive benefits to vaping, but on, like I see a lot of hate, a lot of haters that hate on vaping, well, that always yeah. like, fuck vaping. Like part I of read it, that on Twitter a lot. Part of it too is like douchebag vapors, the guys that just like. <laughs> and I used to be one. Like yeah. when I when okay, what when, exactly is a douchebag? When, vapor? when like <laughs> when I first got into to vaping <laughs> and whatnot, and we I used to be like, oh, I can do this anywhere legally, so I'm just gonna do it everywhere. Oh yeah, I just blow that would, shit in somebody's yeah, face. Yeah, and it would just annoy people. Well, and now well, I'm like, well, uh, back then, like the the vaping, <clears> the kind of stuff we had for vaping back then was. Like a cloud of smoke was like ooh, like it wasn't that big. Like, yeah, now no, but it's like, now it's like ooh. banned in theaters and banned all over the place. Oh yeah, yeah. because freaking... that's because the clouds are thick and fucking huge now. Yeah. But I mean, I, I've all, at the same time too, like while there is douchebag vapors, there's also a really cool like little subculture that's been created around it. It seems people. like a nice community. It is, yeah. The the good ones, the non douchebags, the not the people who don't want to throw it in your face that they're they're yeah. vaping. Yeah, and I don't, I don't get why like the people i see hating on vaping they don't say anything about people who smoke cigarettes uh, maybe they're smokers <laughs> that might be it too but that doesn't make any yeah. sense to me it sounds but then, that's stupid i mean but then i i mean i could see like okay maybe someone who's like super addicted to cigarettes could probably be hating on it but i mean i i still smoke and i'm super addicted yeah to me it, too I, just I, don't. I have i i respect that i mean if you're gonna you know, find you a way to haters? get off. No, I mean, respect the people doing vaping. Oh. Because <laughs> it's just like, I mean, you're trying to take away this bad habit so that, like, I mean, you're giving yourself a new habit, but you're getting rid of a, a nasty one, one that can actually kill you. So. Yeah, true that. So what's up, TJ? What's new with you, man? 
Oh no, same old shit. Your We're cigarettes good. went out. That's yes, good. I know. I that's why I'm putting it down because <laughs> TJ TJ's doing rolled cigarettes because he's so broke right now. He yes, can't afford an actual yeah. pack. All I'm doing is working, and when I'm not working, I'm just sitting at home, um, watching um, Netflix, Hulu, reading my comic books, reading his comic <laughs> books. <laughs> yeah, which I pretty much finished all of all the ones he gave me. So, so why um, did you bring them tonight? I did. I, I did. I, oh, I, oh, got, I got. I got half. I I got half of them. Okay, okay. I'll shut the fuck up. Two of them I didn't finish yet. So I still just gotta read those ones. But what um, two do you have, or what two aren't finished? The V for Vendetta collection and the Watchmen collection. Oh, yeah. the Watchmen! I've read the Watchmen like ten times, dude. I fucking love it yeah, every both, time. Both of them, I have what's called the Absolute Edition. Yeah, I got the big one. The big, yeah, I got oh, that one too, so dude. Good. The big hardcover yeah, edition yeah. with all like, you, the extra shit. Yeah. Have you yeah. read? Have you read? Uh, V for Vendetta? No, I haven't. You, you're yeah. gonna borrow that yeah, next because it's by oh, far dude, my. I've that's been wanting to read that. Yeah. By far my favorite graphic novel of all time. Yep. Yep. But other than reading comics, I've just been watching. <clears throat> oh yeah, who Arrow and and the Flash. They're like I'm catching up on Arrow because I I I don't know I failed at watching it. And you failed? How do you fail at watching? You because just because it's already on the third season and I just started. <laughs> Yeah, but it's on the third season, so you got a lot. You could just like sit down yeah. one day, like smoke the fuck out, and binge for like a <laughs> yeah, binge for like three seasons. True. That's what I like to do. True. I like to do like I don't watch shit like when it's on TV. I wait till it's on Netflix, and then when I have like a day off or something, I'll just fucking yeah, yeah no, like that, that's, that's the reason okay. why. <laughs> this is this is why Hulu is also great because yeah. now it's like okay, well, I'm gonna have to wait till season three is on yeah on what do you call it on Netflix. So I pretty much well, gonna watch all honestly, on honestly, Netflix. right now you're you're a little late on season season three in Hulu because they're only showing the last five episode so you're gonna have to wait for it to come out on netflix yeah. or go to amazon instant prime and buy or it. i i'm thinking i'm just like i'm gonna catch up and then i'm gonna just have a few episodes missing because hulu i mean it's, i think it's only like they're kind of key like uh, as a fan of the show and because someone who's currently know, watching it they're kind of key but i mean look you saw how i read my <laughs> comics i still was able to fill myself in yeah so. i guess like i mean if anything once it gets released on netflix i'll go, you go back and watch, watch it, it yeah. yeah that's why i like like netflix originals too because they'll just put up put up the whole season yeah. when they drop a show right yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really good stuff. So, so Tron, what have you been up to? I uh, just got another job. So right now I'm working two jobs and trying to squeeze whatever else I can in at the same time. It's friggin' I'm just dead. Yeah, you you look dead. Yeah, I know. What the I always fuck look is dead. wrong with your hair? I always look dead. I have no idea. I got out of the shower and I just didn't give a fuck. You got out of the like, shower and your hair turned out like that? Yeah, dude. It came out fucking <laughs> fabulous. Well, actually, I, I, actually I, I would say it came out like shittily fabulous. Is that even a Shittily fabulous? Sh- shittily fabulous. We can make it a word. It yeah, sounds yeah. like it should be a word. Shittily, shittily fabulous. fabulous. Like, boom. Shit fabulous? Shit fabulous? Shabulous. Shit fabulous. Shitabulous. Shitabulous. Yeah. I know. I just put Born. I just put the shit into my hair and brush it, and I was just like, "Fuck it!" <laughs> like, what's that one picture with like? I think it's from a Space Jam. Like, like, I think it's Bill Murray, and he's just like walking. He throws up the golf club, and he's just like, "Fuck it, I'm having a beer." And he's yeah. just like one of those. It's like boom, and so I was like, "Oh, I don't know if I want to drink right now, though. I'm tired." <laughs> <laughs> dude, I forgot so, Bill Murray was in Space. Jam. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah, I didn't even know, dude. Fuck. fuck. <laughs> like, what? Because I mean, how old? How old were we when Space Jam came out? Fucking nine, nine, like nine. Yeah. yeah nine, like all I know is I had a hard on for Lola Bunny. Uh, Lola, Lola Lola Bunny. I was like, like damn. Like, like, like this animated of... character is turning me the fuck on. And like, she's a rabbit. Like yeah. a lot of young you soon to say about rabbits. Right? Yeah, they're horny, right? They're right. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. They okay fuck right. a lot and they reproduce <laughs> super fast, right? <laughs> Boom. Yeah. That means they're ready to go again. So one thing. So one thing that I didn't hear either of you say was that you're not. I didn't hear either of you talk about working on music. Because our lives are that fucking busy. Just too busy well, right it's now. Not, it's, just not, it's not that it's busy. Well, um, for me right now. But. Well, for him, yeah. For him, it's busy. But, um, I mean, I'm always at, like I said earlier, I'm always, if I'm at work, I go to work or I'm at home. And what? Did you might put on your chin. You're like, it's, uh, what? Yeah, just, just rest it on your chin. Okay, fine. Okay. Well, like, I'm either at work or I'm at home playing around on the computer watching Netflix, Hulu, or making music. So, like, I tend to, like, I'll I'll end up like creating like at least just like a foundation for us, and then whenever all of us or any of us get in the studio, that's the only time we work on anything. And and all three of you are in the group together, astronauts by night. Yes. Yeah, man. And recently, you all just won the the Vidium AM challenge. So can, was that recently? Inter- I feel like it's been a it's, while. It's ago. been a year. It's, it's, been, it's, been it's a almost year? it's almost been a year. We still didn't okay, well, our let's, prize. Let's, no, 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 no. What's going on? <laughs> let's well, let's just know, talk right. about that. Let's, let's talk a little bit about you know what you guys did. Because one of the things that we, we focused on a lot uh, uh, on the last podcast was getting your stuff out there and getting seen by other people and getting recognized. And mm-hmm. you guys obviously got recognized. You got yeah. you won a, a national competition. You're going to be taken out to a, a fairly big little gig yeah. that you're going to be playing in L.A. eventually. 
uh, talk a little bit about what it all what all went down into getting you guys into that and you know what the process was well, for video for video is a social music platform right that's yeah. trying to compete with i think they're trying to compete with yeah their main their main thing SoundCloud. yeah their main thing was to was to was about it was it, they all started coming out right when um right when soundcloud started doing all the uh there was a lot of problems with the copyright infringement like how yeah. people would put up their dj mixes like we were actually a victim of this we actually tried the reason we stopped putting stuff on SoundCloud, SoundCloud. and started moving to iTunes was because they wouldn't we would try to put up our mixes or just for our DJ mix for the, the yeah. episode's Cosmic Velocity, and they would take it down. Or they wouldn't allow us to upload it because there was a song in there that, that I guess, an artist didn't want <clears throat> up there or whatever it was. Yeah. So for months, we couldn't upload podcasts, and we are just like, you know what? Like, fuck it. We're done with this. Like, if I mean, like, we're just underground artists that we're trying to get out there. Like, we're just trying to promote some good mixes, some good music, and, and they won't even let us do this. And, so, and while it's not your songs, it's still your oh, mixes. Yeah, it's just our mixes. Like we give all of our all the credit to the artist. That's for damn sure. But yeah. the one thing is, just like we just want to put up a mix of good music for people to listen to. Yeah, I mean, and they're trying to monetize SoundCloud now too. They just yeah. like partner with like major and labels and stuff. That's mm-hmm. probably why all that yeah, copyright just why. started coming in. So so Vidium AM is is kind of filling that that void that was left when SoundCloud went went for the money. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. All pretty right. Much. <coughs> and then uh, I guess pretty much like. The last update I got from Anna, who is the president of Vidium, pretty much said like we're still working on it, and um, it's just where it's it's they, there's, since there's still a new startup kind of uh, startup kind of company, and I believe it is still they probably just got a lot of things they got to work. Yeah, on I, I believe it's a I believe they she's doing this all just on her own, maybe with a, a little bit of help from other I'm people. I'm pretty sure she's got a team. You can't be yeah doing a, yeah doing I know, but then like like that without a team. Yeah, I know, but then it's just like. I don't know what kind of if they have a lot of investors or not. So it's just like as us being the artists, yeah, we did win. But I mean, at the same time, they're the one that's suppl- that's giving us the opportunity. Like say, like let alone the fact that like we won the breakshit competition. Like through that, other opportunities have opened. Like the remix competitions through Save Me from Falling, which is our first track that's going to be signed on an actual record label nice. through Joy Records. Nice. And that when we entered that one, that one got third. Was it third place? We tied for third. Yeah, we tied. And for then third. we allowed we were allowed to. Release the track. Did so, they want us to, like, what was it that? What was that joke that they wanted? All to those fuck fucking Steve. So <laughs> he pretty much like posted up, like the they posted up the winners and they're like, oh, the winners, uh, like the, the first place, second place, third place, and then the third place is tied. So they're like, oh, whoever can send a picture of them in the nude holding a sign that says Joy Records, blah 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 blah. And I was like, what the fuck is this shit? So it? I actually did no, did no, I actually did called it. up all of them. <laughs> Cause I was like, "What the fuck is this shit?" And I was like, "I don't like. I'm not gonna. I don't want to win a contest because like, cause I was, just because I posted a picture of myself with a freaking sign in front of my penis." But like, think think about it this way: like that would have been a great story. It's like, yeah, we got signed. It already. I posted it, a picture of my dick yeah, on the internet. Yeah, end. but then <laughs> yeah, we but got it look like yeah, a fucking yeah, joke. Yeah, you know this, yeah. Do you want to be the Do you want to be the artist that's known for being signed just <laughs> I mean, because he took a fucking picture? No, based I want to. Yeah, yeah, we want to be just on our music. I'm also a comedian, so I go for the funniest. Now, but for real, yeah, it would have been funny. It would have been funny. Yeah, no, like, because I, I, I hit up no, both of them. I, I hit, that, I I hit up both of them, cause, or, like, because I, I needed a, a group opinion on it. And I asked both of them, I was like, what do you guys want to do? And they're like, you know what? Nope. Like, and we're just yeah, like, no. Like, fuck that. Yeah, he's That's like, fuck stupid. that. So, so I messaged Steve, and I was just like, hey, you know what? Like, we really appreciate the opportunity, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? We're going to bow out because we don't want our music to be known with that. Like we don't want to be known. We don't for, want to be. Yeah, known. we don't want to be known for doing that in order to get signed a label. And I was like, it's it was nice working. Thank you for the opportunity. I'll talk to you later. Blah blah blah. And he's like, yo yo yo, wait 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 wait. He's like, yo. It's like it's a joke. And I'm like, excuse me. Like like I was so stressed out from that shit. I actually went to the store and bought a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> like that's how stressed I was. I didn't smoke for like I didn't buy any cigarettes for months. And I, I don't like, think it was a joke. I, I think he was being serious. Maybe he was. <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe I don't know. Maybe he just wanted to see. Maybe his maybe what happened was. <laughs> Maybe what happened was both people who were asked it so new to back down. He was like, fuck, I need a third place. Uh, shit. No, no, no. It's, it's a joke. It's totally a joke. Fuck, I don't get to see penis now. <laughs> no, that's fucked up. No. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. well, uh, the other thing that uh, we wanted to have you guys in here is because we all talk about the local scenes and the various different subcultures out here. And since you guys produce uh, electronic music, uh, we want to talk a little bit about the rave scene. And oh, how yeah. it's kind of evolved. And no, we we were definitely weren't here for the beginning. We came in somewhere towards the middle, a little bit after yeah, uh, little after bit. the first death, as it's been called. Yeah. I uh, but I mean, it's it's changed a lot. Like I I don't even go out anymore. I, I used to be pretty. I think amazing. that's just because we grew the fuck up. Is it or <laughs> I mean, is it or has like things changed? Because the when I do go out now, I see like 
really dumb shit happening, and I don't remember doing dumb shit like that. Well, I don't know. As you, as we get older, <clears throat> I feel like priorities change. Yeah, you know yeah. I'm saying? I mean, that's okay. definitely part of it. When I first, okay, when I first got into into like electronic dance music, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of got into it. Well, I did get into it because of the drugs that are that are associated with that scene. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, you know, I, I like getting fucked up. That was that for me personally. I wasn't really a fan of the music beforehand, but I will say that participating in that culture, where like in, having the the drugs introduce me to that culture, made me fall in love with the music and the culture. Changed my opinion on everything too. Like I, yeah. I, I kind of did the same thing. Like I, I was actually not even quite out of the military yet, but I was supposed <laughs> to be getting out soon. Yeah, <clears throat> and I had a really bad time, and so I was sitting there like, oh, I'm. I'm going to, you know, get fucked up on something. I've never done a drug before. Let's see what I can do. And I just tried some stuff. Was that the ecstasy, the first drug you've ever taken? Uh, Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I smoked weed once, but I didn't really feel anything. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, ecstasy was the first thing I ever did that, like, I felt something on besides, like, alcohol. Yeah. And so, uh, like, I like I did the same thing. I did that. And then I was like, oh, this was a place to go and, and Such do a drugs at first. But, like, within, like, a couple times, I started really getting gravitated to the sense of community that was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then, like, after a little while, when I got more into doing sound and stage lighting and whatnot, I started picking up on the music more and whatnot, because uh, I'm not musically inclined. I, I, I can't sing. Like, you probably heard me. If you watched the last one or listened to the last one, you heard me singing, uh, somewhat singing along with the uh, Ego Raptor song there. You and did? It, uh, oh, my God. I need to watch the rest of that fucking podcast. Yeah, that episode. Yeah, I watched, played. like, half of it, and I fell asleep because I was fucking <laughs> – I was drunk and tired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you. Yeah. So <laughs> – but yeah, no, and then I, I grew an appreciation for not just yeah. uh, the scene, but like the people that were in the scene and yeah, the yeah. community that was there and how everyone treated each other really, really well. Back yeah. then, the community was... was it was a lot I, smaller. I think, it was a lot smaller. Was, I mean, of course, yeah, smaller, but <clears throat> I felt smaller like it was than a lot... Than it is now, way smaller. It was a lot stronger, yeah. I guess, and more of like supporting the culture and like making sure that like you were doing... Like you didn't do anything that would take yourself too far like yeah because it right, was kind yeah, of like no, self-contained you, you know of, since it's yeah. so small then a lot of people can share their ideas on how to um take care how of to each other. take care of each other yeah. within such a small how to but be since, protected yeah but since it like blew up it's like it's everywhere now so yeah. there's no way well, like, no like one, one of the things that that i want to bring like when when we first started like there was never a fight no, nope. no, nope. never. Like nope. at best, you might get like a heated argument, and then someone would step in and be like, "Hey, look, you go over there, you go over there. We're gonna chill out for a little while." And then like people would make up afterwards. Yeah. In the yeah. past, like part of the reason why I stopped was because like police have been getting involved with the scene now. Like I know there's been a couple different events that have had to move their place or been canceled because someone was like, "Oh, it's a drug related event," and now and be because the scene's getting too big, and then fights are breaking out. I mean, a couple people have died now yeah. a few different things like that never used to happen <coughs> yeah and i mean part of it is like yeah the scene is getting too big for sure but at the same time like there's all there's giant things that we i mean like if the if the community stayed together like that like yeah. I, I think it was part of it was that it didn't grow gradually like it was small and, it and then it just it, yeah just there was that one there huge. was that one summer when we used to go we used to go to the shop all the time and yeah the we used shop. To just, yeah oh, we, used to just, we used to just go over there and just chill and hang out and then like you, there would be like maybe like don't quote me on this maybe like maybe like 40 to 50 people that would roll through every every weekend that we were there it used to be at one point like where like no 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 no, no 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 but like i'm, I'm saying before yeah. it exploded like and then all of a sudden there was this like right when summer started of yeah. a certain <laughs> year it it just got ridiculous. It's two thousand nine. Like, like, yeah, and no, like there was, was that it when went, I was. That's when you there. just started coming in. When yeah, I started going and, there. It, and like it was crazy because like we went from I went from knowing every single person's name in that place to who the fuck are these people? Yeah. Yeah. For like, those that don't know, fuck? somebody somebody tell our listeners what the shop was because the shop to me was kind of a kind of a special place. No, it, the it shop, was a special. The place. shop <laughs> had a real good intimacy. Like it was it was really small. It was probably about the size of like this house. It was the second story of a old um car garage. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Like, or like an auto shop or something yeah, like that. That's why that's it was called yeah. the shop. I remember yeah. it being ridiculously hot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Didn't I think actually uh, one of the I think Marvin or DJ Scarred, one of his his photo photography lenses actually Fogged got up. yeah got, yeah the moisture got in there and fucked up his shit. Yeah, I remember. Okay, it was like the second oh, second floor 
of this old auto shop and you'd walk up these like dark stairs the tiny stairs and then you and all you hear the door, is the music all you hear you feel yep. the bass like thump, thump, thump. and then you open the door and then you just blasted it with like body heat of like <laughs> mm. as soon as that door opened you would be like oh my god it's like opening an and oven. Then you just start sweating automatically and then then you go pay and then you see the overpriced water and then you uh, <laughs> then you like wade through a crowd of sweaty actually you know what people. you know what their, their water wasn't that bad the overpriced water was like at pipeline that was like oh, where yeah, it was five dollars yeah. a bottle that was overpriced yeah. like, was the water I thought the it was like two dollars or no was it? it was like two dollars at the I, shop and then it was two dollars okay. and fifty cents over the moderately well, then I don't know priced if, water I don't know if it's the price <laughs> yeah moderately priced I mean you go to a vending machine it's what only a dollar yeah. you know like it's like and you're buying that same bottle over there for like twice the price so I remember beer at one point beer was cheaper than water at freaking pipeline. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and I was, was. Just like, yes, I was just like I was like yes and I was like I'll just drink beer all night. Yeah. Well, thank God that place is gone. No, no, no hell no, dude. <laughs> pipeline was one of the best <laughs> pipeline. Dude, pipeline my first great. my first electronic event I went to completely sober. I was 18. V3? Yeah, and it was Paul Brandon's V3 release party and like Oh my god! It was one of the freaking coolest things I went to. Dude, like, the I, pipeline I, was. I mean, I started at Pipeline for Silky Love too. Like, I, it was like, dude, that place is, is was was the place. Yeah, and it's to. not like it was. I don't. I don't think there were a lot of rules there either. I mean, as long as everybody was like safe and stuff. Well, that's yeah. the thing is, it we didn't like, need rules back then. Yeah, because like everybody yeah. was so. Everyone knew their shit. shit. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean part of that, part of that is credit to like we have to credit the people who were in the scene oh, way yeah. before us. Oh because, yeah. Oh yeah. Because this scene existed and died. Before then, we came in, and then well, he, it's and a then he resurrected. It. It goes, yeah, yeah they, it, the, it dies the, and the hardcore, comes back. Dies the hardcore people back. that stayed in, they they're the ones who who kind of brought it back slowly. Yeah, sorry, they resurrected. It. I want to just put on one percent. I'd say they resurrected it. Yeah, that that community, that small community that <clears throat> stayed alive and kept it going, is what resurrected our EDM scene back in, yeah. back here in Hawaii. And and it was those guys who were kind of regulating and making the rules for for the new people that came in. And then I think uh, part of the fallout was was the, that giant explosion. Of a uh, influx of people, but also like there wasn't enough of of the new guys that were trained by the old on how to keep people yeah, safe. Yeah, to teach like the newer generation. Yeah, yeah. there wasn't enough of us yeah, to come in and be like. And, and I tried. I, I tried. Yeah, how did too. that go? <laughs> it didn't go so well. Yeah, <laughs> you had a lot of people who just didn't want to talk to you. Yep. Or... <laughs> It's fucked up. I, w- I was that was in general. I wasn't saying that to TJ, but I mean no. him, him oh, especially. My bad. Shit. Him no. especially, but I mean like same thing happened to me. Like <laughs> it was just you know like he, you would end up like you would see someone that would like you were like oh that person needs to be you know told hey settle down a little bit otherwise like some bad stuff could happen and you would go over try and help and they would just like throw it back in your face like you're not my man. <laughs> I want to say that. I want to say that partially because of the the I like, guess like the the business of it. Like if you think about it, like um, what is it? Around was it that two thousand nine? It was a two thousand no, it was two thousand yeah, it was two thousand nine summer, and that's when what Rapture opened up too. It was, was that Rapture. warehouse in Kakako? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Rapture and like after I went to Silky Love, I'd, like I would go, I would go to Rapture before I started going to the shop. After those were Rapture the down, those are the Wonderland guys now, right? The yeah, people they're that do now that. Wonderland. Uh, promotion well, actually, you know, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know if actually it's still them. I think it was a split. No, it's or Defiant. Something. Defiant is um, the guys who are are and stuff, and they're the ones who help um, Wonderland do their thing. Okay. So Rapture was was between Keegan and Joey and like a um, bunch of our boys as well as Defiant and then those two got those two then ended up becoming Wonderland after Rapture closed down. Oh, okay. I see. So, yeah, I, I was close with those guys. Mm. I but I like seeing them in, as often. So. I think that's when it started blowing up when Wonder one what. <laughs> Wonderland started doing their thing right at the water park. Yeah, that that was definitely well, well, a big contributor. Well, I mean, like, was that when it blew up? No, well, it was a business part of thing. It. it was like who was trying to get more people, and as they're trying to like you know draw people more in, they're also attracting. Well, see, people no, no, no. Who see, that, that was the thing. That, that was stuff. that like, was like that was a Wonderland thing. Like, I worked with Pure Coalition. I still do every once in a while. And we were, yeah, we always did want big turnouts because that would mean that we'd be able to more do more profits, stuff, better stuff going. Yeah. But like, our, our was never like. How can we hit up more people or how can we get more than Wonderland? Wonderland came in and was like, how can we do bigger parties than Pure Coalition? And how can we screw up their party so they get less than us? Oh, yeah. there's, and that was part of the beef that started. There's so much dirty shit that... You're not on mic. All right, I'm writing my Well, here. just the whole promotion game in general because they're in the business of making money. Yeah, yeah you know, for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You can't put them down for that. Well, I mean, I think in, in general, all... 
all all these companies are in the business to make money because you want to bring out bigger and better acts, like he just said. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like the, <clears throat> the difference that I think it was is um, that there's there's some companies out there that they want more people to show up so they can do bigger and better things, and then there's some that want more people to show up so that they can have more money. Yeah, you know, there's people just who, because they want to mm, be rich. It's it's what comes first, right? The music or the money? Yeah. Or the experience that you're trying to provide people that come to your events. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I guess you can can you can kind of tell the difference between okay, if there's a promoter out there looking for the money, and if there's a promoter out there that's in it for the music and the experience, you can kind of tell yeah. by the different experiences that you get going to uh, whichever party, I guess. Yeah, and and I I can't speak for Wonderland because I never did anything with them, but yeah. I know like uh, Pure Coalition, we we were always about like making sure that people had a good time, and we wanted to bring out the acts that we wanted to hear, yeah, and whatnot, and so that Not was just who's popular, yeah, no, yeah, so that's true. So uh, I I jumped over onto the rave scene real fast there, yeah. but uh, uh, I completely missed out. We wanted to play one of your guys' song that, uh, that you, yeah. you brought a song for us yeah, to listen I to. I have it. Do it. Should we just? <clears throat> do you guys want me to play it right here, or do you want to um, play it and take a break or some shit? Or? Is that how we're doing? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know how this works. Because we'll, we'll just go in and edit it. We'll just drop yeah. It I'll just yeah. like cut and then I'll drop it in after like this whole part where I'm talking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so, uh, so we'll, this part will get cut out. Uh, actually, just do do a little bit. Just say like so. Um, in, actually, here you introduce the song. Just tell us about the song. Yeah. Then yeah. we'll we'll all just we'll be it. silent for a few seconds and then he'll cut it. Okay. All right. Well, so the song is it's our um, our remix that we just mentioned earlier for the for Vidium, the uh, Save Me from Falling, the one the that contest, we the one yeah it was the, the contest the, the that contest. was hosted by Vidium yeah, yeah it was the contest hosted by Vidium Records. so it's uh, Save Me from Falling yeah All it's right. our, our remix of Save Me from Falling yeah so this is Astronauts by Night remix of Save Me from Falling. I'm lost. 
So that was Astronauts by Night, Save Me from, that was their remix of Save Me from Falling. So go check them out, Astronauts by Night. Uh, give us your guys' Twitter real fast, hit them right here in the it's middle. At, it's at astronauts <laughs> underscore BN, and our Instagram is astronauts underscore by underscore night. And astronauts yeah. by Night on Facebook and all that yeah, stuff? Yeah, it's Facebook slash astronauts. <clears throat> and by then our website at astronautsbynight.com should be up, hopefully by the time this episode goes up. <laughs> yeah, we've all been busy, dude. Yeah, hella busy. Yeah. Okay, so on to other news. What, what what you bring to talk about today, Cozy? Um, I didn't bring anything, man. I was just kind of wing it. Any events that we got going on? That events. We talk okay, about? well, current events, recent events. Um, for, I mean, I can just browse Reddit and tell us what the top story is. For um, for Greenleaf Check, we just had our first event at at the Safe House at the Republic. Yeah, dude, how'd that shit go? I went, it went really good. We had a pretty good turnout, and we had, like, some of the dopest DJs in the underground music scene rock for us. Um, we had uh, we had DJ Delve, who's, uh, I think he, he's a resident over at Manifest in Lulu's Waikiki. And um, DJ Seiko, who is a part of the Spells Collective. That sounds cool as fuck. 
Hmm? That sounds cool as fuck. You're not spells on mic. Collected. Yeah, I know I'm not on mic. I'm just saying here. What sounds cool? Spells? That sounds cool as fuck. <laughs> no, like, no, the Spells Collective, like, that, just that name, it just sounds fucking cool. Yeah, they're the guys that brought down, um... Like Wicked Circle They brought down this oh, dope, that. like, they br- <laughs> who they bring down recently? The last one I went to that... Last party I went to that they threw was um Toki Monster, who's this um this Asian oh, girl, nice. Korean, I think, Sounds based out of it. L.A. Oh, she's bad. Oh yeah, she's a bad <laughs> yeah. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> she's bad, bad bitch. bitch. She probably never showed this podcast to my girlfriend. She'll probably and then we had our resident DJs playing as well on uh, Tedabyte and Kawaii Kawaii, <laughs> as well as um live visuals by Hypoetical, who's one of the sickest <laughs> like live visual artists that I've ever seen. We got to um. Republic let us use their their big ass like LED screen. That shit is dope. The one. Remember yeah. when we did Emma Hewitt and I just like it's like look mom our name is up yeah. in lights like yeah. shit that <laughs> shit was <laughs> dope. Shit. Yeah, so we had him rocking the stuff, rocking the screen, and then we had qualified, um, hosting the party, and we had a pretty good turnout, man. We're gonna do it every other month, so the next party is nice. gonna be nice. on March twenty sixth, so the last Thursday of every other month. And um, we already got some dope talent lined up for that one, which I'll be announcing soon. Very nice. Uh, does Astronauts by Night have any events coming up? Honestly, <laughs> right now we've no. been we've been just kind of taking no. a break. We're just focusing on, on music, production right yeah. now. Yeah, because it's like, well, how many tracks we got in the oven right now? Uh, I talk about it like it's fucking Warframe. Buns in, <laughs> Buns in the oven. Buns in the oven. Well, yeah, I, I would say like there's probably about five. Well. Five that are like pretty much close to just like so like in the final last final minute stages. touches and then pre master ma- final master yeah. da 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 da. Um, I mean, tr- there's probably a billion projects that are waiting to start. Um, if we can never recover your computer. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. Uh, it doesn't actually. It doesn't even matter if we recover my computer because those those projects are probably all old and forgotten anyway. Yeah. Um, but um, I mean, I I I just came up with a few more melodies and stuff. So. Um, grounds and stuff to, to start on to work on for all of us and, yes. and for those that don't know what kind of music that us astronauts by night make we make music called trance let people know what trance is what is trance what, what is trance what to is you? your what's what's your definition of trance tj um <coughs> if you want me to go deep i literally think yes, it's go the, deep. The, <laughs> deep. it's the frequencies that's your soul not, and heart really speak. bad coming from a dude Italian, Italian nah, man, it sounds like you like it deep. Oh, fuck my life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who Wait, know? you don't like it deep? Oh, fuck. I like, I like going deep. I don't like... Get- oh, fuck you guys, bro. Fuck you guys. So Charlie's should I go deep, ladies and gentlemen? No, no. Should like- I stop going deep on you? Oh, dude, shut the fuck up. But I, like- Wait, it's TJ's turn on the mic. Let TJ go right, deep. I mean, I said it, but I mean, just so that everybody here hears it. But like, yeah, no, I think it's the frequencies that your soul and your heart speaks. Like, I, I, I like to consider it that way because the language it's damn the language. that's deep bro yeah the was that, was that okay it was deep? not like balls deep but it's like it's, i don't know that feels like it was is that like is that like is that like a, a like halfway down the shaft deep or like? i think you hit the prostate there <laughs> wait okay that never was, mind. It was so i was deep, like wait you could see your head poking up through their skin you know that was so deep it's coming out of my mouth Oh, fuck, that's deep. <laughs> that's fucking deep, bro. Actually, wait, oh, would that be coming up? So that'd be, like, rising already? Yeah, that goes it's through, so like, deep that rises. That goes through, like, a mile of intestines. <laughs> he's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. But yeah, are getting technical porn deep. I, I agree. Like, trance is a very emotional genre of music, if you will. Very, very... Plays, it's definitely, it, it's it definitely, tugs at your heartstrings. Yes, yes. It's it's one of the genres of like I like I said I, I don't listen to a ton of music, but it's one of the, the genres that I listen to more often than yeah. anything else. There's nothing like a good trance track. That's yeah. like thumping real fast, steady beat, sick melodies. Just makes you be like, oh. especially when you have like the harmonics and the vocals are all right oh, in there. Yeah, and especially so if you're under the things. influence of MDMA. Oh my god. Do you guys <laughs> do? do <laughs> Do any of you guys have a, a trance song that's particularly hitting your heartstrings right now? Ooh. Uh, any, actually, uh, any, anything from Raphael Frost or Elon Bluestone for me yeah, personally. Like, can, we, can we play something from them and we'll just talk over it a little yeah. bit? Oh, why don't we, we just play, why don't we play our mashup of, of oh, fucking... Yeah. Why didn't we just play... Well, we, we have we two did mashups. Yeah. We have two mashups. The one that got me into Astronauts by Night and then the one that we did after I joined well, let's it. Hear, yeah. Let's hear your introduction. So, um, <clears throat> so I guess uh, the... We'll, we'll do the one that got me in. Is which it is, is it is it anywhere on YouTube or anything like that that we can pull up and yeah. play it on the podcast? Yeah, you can actually yeah. so pull, just look up astronauts. Are, is your, oh, your laptop's connected? No, right? it's on Vidium. No, it's not. No, um, 
Um, remember, uh, what do you call we it? Have the, we have the thing live of me shooting the video, uh, but that's it. No, it's no, only... there's another one that, um, what is it, Kevin did. Um, go on, Kevin Chen or something. But it's not that long. The whole track, oh, yeah, is, the whole bringing, track, the whole track yeah. is on video. So if you just go to vidi.am. We'll play the whole track with just like a snippet. We'll just play a little bit. We'll, well talk it's, about it. Well, it it's, only, it's only like a few. It's only I only put up a preview. I didn't oh, want okay. it to be. Yeah. I didn't want the whole intro, the whole outro. Like, no, Vidi.am. Yep. Yep. Vidi.am. And no one to just search. Yeah. And I think like if you like. Search. Yeah, that one was like. Where's the fucking search thing? Oh, that was funny. That, it's funny how that happened. Cause... I don't know how to use internet. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where to go. Speaking try You know what? Try to look up. Web. Maybe try just going on Google and just typing in like Ocean Google Lab Google. versus. Versus uh, uh Dylan so Bluestone. Yeah. yeah. That one was that one was great. That was funny because um both me and Jason like we're thinking about mashing up that song. Like we both Yeah, because we yeah, because you showed but... me the you showed me the acapellas and I was like, What what the fuck should we mash this up to? Yeah. What's the song called? No, that's in Kalo. That's the one we did for that's the, the remix we entered for yeah. that's that's the new one we fortunately What's played. the one we're trying to play? Uh Satisphere. Which is Satellite by Ocean Lab and I don't Spears see it on here. No, it's in one of the, one of the other lists. You have to open up. I think it's in the it's in the break shit list. You must be logged in to view. Hmm. Here, well, I can just play it off this my phone. Is boring. Part. Here, hold on. I'll text you the. Phone too. Yeah, you wanna you wanna put the. Uh, just plug the uh, thing from your computer into his phone and play it off his phone. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I can. Do that. I can I, I'll text you the login info. No, no, no. <clears throat> no, no, no. We're just no, going to no, play right it off there. his phone. Yeah, I got it right here on my phone. So oh, there. yeah, there you go. Doug then he'll just unplug it there. Cool. Don't, Yeah, don't let it touch your skin. Dun, 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 We're getting dun, dun, all that. That's his internal frequency. I turned it down. All right, cool. We st- I think we still got the feedback, but we'll see. Did uh, When I turned down my shit, because I noticed that when I play it back, the thing, you don't hear the pop. When I when I turned down my shit last episode, did you hear? Did you edit that? I don't remember. No. I don't know. Okay, then, then, it, I then turn it down the volume. It, turn it down the volume did work. Okay, so I mean, we're good. I'm gonna, All right, so let's hear. It. So, uh, yeah, so give us the track info again. This is this is the track that got you because originally it was just uh, Tron and, and Cozy here yeah. was part of was ABN, yeah. and then yeah. they decided to bring you in because you were like, a rising no, it's talent. Just, it's just, no, it's not rising talent. It's just because we were we were just in the studio together, and a lot of our a lot of our. Well, what um, happened was that I, I'm like we were talking about it, like separately, like oh we're gonna mash up Spheres, which yeah, is Spheres that. is a lot of Bluestone's track, and then. I had the acapellas, and I just slapped it on, and like I put it like just a, a snippet of me trying to mix it together on um on Instagram, and he was like, "Oh, that's so dope! Do it, do it, do it!" And like, give me the track so we can play it at Emma Hewitt. So we did. I did that, and the crowd loved it so much that we're, they were just like, "Dude, like this." That and Epitaph. Yeah. We dropped Epitaph. Oh, yeah. That was Epitaph. that was crazy. Epitaph be- just became like, okay, this is just going to be Astronauts by Nights. Yeah, know, like that's, that's, track with it was, yeah. It. So you guys just happened to work together really, really yeah, well. Yeah, it, it started as just like, we were just going to do a collab <laughs> with Epitaph. And then it just, the, it just worked so well that I was like, yo, dude, I was like, why don't you jump in, man? Like, like let's do it. Yeah. It's like, just freaking just, let's just do music together. It's fucking awesome. Now it's a three man group. Yep. All right, let's hit this track. Yep. So so that's that satellite by Ocean Lab and Alan Bluestone Spheres. And your and your mix is called. Yeah, we're we're calling it Satispheres. Satis, that's nice. Satispheres. It sounds cool, right? <clears throat> yeah, I got it. Let me just find a nice little. Just skipping forward a little bit. There we go. Yeah, yeah that sounds nice. I was just afraid that it was just gonna be like boom. And like, yeah, that's fuck. what I was trying not to do, but I forget my phone now. I did it at work the other day, and I put like I left this. I didn't know that the the airplane from the Max goes to the system so loud. So I was like cranking it up, and there's a delay, and it's just like bad. And all my coworkers like Jesus, fuck. <laughs> like, was so, I felt so fucking bad. Yeah, so this is trash music. Baby. To just feel yeah, her I'm words, sure. yeah. Feel her words grabbing your fucking soul, putting it out of your mouth, and just like dripping it with her, her, her love and saliva. You know, I I think that this really activates like serotonin and dopamine levels in your in your like. I, I have no nothing to back that up, but I feel like like listening to this kind of music. Well, there's you know there's actually sorry. There was actually a study that was done recently about how music, it's a, fuck, it's a BuzzFeed thing, I'll fucking show you the link later, but it's how music can actually like, I think the number one feeling or emotion you get from it first is nostalgia, and then all, it, depending on the person and how what type of music it is, it can release dopamine and all that other yeah, crap that's and, good. And that's that's part of the, the appeal of music, and, and music like this, 
always hits me in yeah. that right place where I start Same feeling here. happy and better. Especially like the nostalgia factor too, because like certain songs, you hear a certain song and it, it'll even like take you back to certain memories, like yep. like good memories, bad memories, whatever. It's kind of crazy. It's like it's like music is a form of time travel, yeah. if you will. You yeah, I mean? bring it down a little bit because we're all yelling over here. Yeah. yeah, just bring it down so they can hear us more easily. So, but yeah, I mean, it, it really is, and it 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 tugs on those heartstrings, like you were yep. saying, and, and it just it makes you feel better. Yep. Nice drop right there. Well, that's that's not all. That's all old to to Elon right there. Oh, that's no, his, that's I, his I shit. He's like, it's so funny, like because I to work for, before work Blue, that, before man. I started hearing Blue Zone come out like a lot. I was actually just on Facebook one day, and uh, Mayan from Mayan Shape 54 posted up a link to a chat room. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, like it'd be nice to talk to Mayan again. I just saw him like, at New Year's, me and my girlfriend partied with him, and then and then the link pops up, and not only is he in there, he's in there, Bluestone's in there, Mayor Levy's in there. So it's just like, I get a, I'm in a chat room with a lot of producers that I look up to, and I'm like, holy shit. And like, this is before... This is back when it, it, he wasn't known as Elon Bluestone. He was, and people were just calling him Bluestone. He was putting out his music as Bluestone, and then, and then like he was just asking like, "Oh, what do you guys think of this track? What do you guys think of that track?" So and you, like, you oh. get to hear a lot of this stuff like ahead of time. Yeah, so we got to hear some of his tracks before it was ever released. That's and really then, cool. And then he finally he came out, and then I was just like, "Oh my god!" Like I was just in a chat room with this guy two weeks ago, Listening and then and shit. then and then I think. Every single track he's produced since then has been like, it's been at least in the top 10. Wow, that's, that's on pretty, B-Port, yeah. like, pretty uh, For trance, and it's just crazy. Let's go ahead, let's bring it out. And that was... Satisfiers. <laughs> dope, dope mashup. Okay. Yeah. So oh. yeah, that's trance right there. Trance. Boom. Oh man. Oh man, that made me feel really good inside. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Like some I fucking... got this like little warm feeling going through my soul. That's I think that's because Jason went too deep. <laughs> Way to bring it back to that. <laughs> went too deep and just <laughs> released a ton of protein in there. I was, there. Trying, to, I was trying to be all like honest and like insightful. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Did you just call it? Wait, wait. Did you just call it protein? No, I said. Well, that would have been better. <laughs> that's why I was like, I was like protein. I was like, whoa. That's I was got, like, that's, that's, a like, protein that's for my you. new word for. <laughs> Semen. Yeah, dude. You're like, just calling but... it protein. <laughs> oh my god, dude! I was like, what the? Fuck? But no, <laughs> that 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 song, dude. It hit. It pulled a lot of heartstrings that night when when these two dropped it over at um. I think if you actually look at the video, I don't know if we can actually put a video of, of the one Nike I recorded. SM? You can see TJ in his white long ass shirt. Because, like, before he got all fucked up, and we have to find him later. And yeah, like, with yeah, the, you just see his arms, it's like. Like, like those wiggly arm what's that thing it hasn't like? even dropped yet and my arm the is like yes! yeah, 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 yeah. yeah 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 like inflatable arms like a tube man yeah it's just like he's just like Ooh! and I was like oh my and I was like hey cozy I was like look look there's TJ where where I was like skinny dude with a white shirt and he's like oh there he is <laughs> and cozy's just like look at this fuck he's all fucked up I was it's such a great feeling too DJing and playing this kind of music and seeing the people react to what you're playing with it's, this it's, kind of music. It, it makes a connection with them. Yeah, it's very just like, dope connection. Yeah, like, and honestly, it's just like, before, it was just like, when I used to like just roll like and just go out to the events and roll, yeah. it's just like, when I finally like stopped and I and I realized I could get this kind of feeling with them without the drugs, it was just like, it's, it's fucking awesome. Like, yeah. some people, like, I, I could totally like name people, but I'm not going to, that have like, that you see them get into the scene and you see them get all fucked up and they're like, oh my God, this is so awesome. And then like, they have a freaking really bad night where they are stupid and they take too much shit. And then yeah. like, then they start hating on the scene, saying that everyone in the scene is druggies and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you're yeah. such a fucking hypocrite. There's actually this person, I remember posted on my wall or I posted something about the electronic music scene and this person came up on my, went up on my, my Facebook wall and completely started blasting everyone in the scene, including like, like DJ everyone just like completely put that shit on blast and I was just saying like that everyone involved with the, in, with the rave scene is constantly on drugs and blah 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 I was just like I was wow. like that person's a little bitch yeah. can't handle this shit yeah I was just like, I was just like fuck this shit. but you know what the, the craziest thing was was instantly a, like I think it was maybe like within 10 minutes 
everyone that we were close that we were close with in the scene that would always go out to the events and stuff like that started coming coming to the scene's defense. Yeah. And it and it even there were even a bunch of people that were like I guess we would consider the old timers yeah. that that actually helped us like learn how to like get away from all that kind of stuff and just remember it's always about the music and about community and stuff like that and it was those people that came to defend the scene yeah. and taught us how to do the same. And it's just like once I learned that I didn't need this kind of stuff to have a good time, that's when I started appreciating the music even more. That's a that's a beautiful thing, man, too. When people come in defense of something like that, that just shows you like the kind of people that are involved in the scene, you yeah. know, how passionate they are about it and how they don't take no shit from somebody yeah. who's hating like oh, from you, whatever like bullshit perspective do you, do you they're guys, taking shit. Do you guys remember the the whole um oh my god, what's that guy from the Black Eyed Peas? Oh uh, yeah. When he uh, yeah, when he stole um, Marty or no, Matzo Artie. and Artie. Yeah, he told stole Matzo and Artie's uh, a sound from one of their songs. Yeah, and and no, used it was it. literally the whole song. Yeah, it and was used literally it, the whole used song. it on their stuff, and then he released the album. Yeah, and he didn't get authoriz- authorization from Anjuna Beats. Sampling it. Yeah, so then and then like Anjuna Beats, oh, they're quick on this. Yeah, like they yeah, got yeah. it, and like I don't. Uh, all I know is that well, from what everything was that was posted on the internet is that is that Will I Am said. That he asked them, "Hey, let's collab on the track," but never got a response. And yeah. he just released it anyways. And then, but what really happened really quick was this: like, like of course, like the people came on there and they were bashing Will I Am and blah 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 on all, all, all this and stuff. Well, he's been an awful lot of songs. There's um, was it? Got a fe- I got a feeling or whatever. That's that was a totally bit off. This well, that's because he comes from hip hop, man. Hip hop. Well, I, I, I can f- understand. I got that. a feeling like, is an old song. Yeah, but he's been. I mean, like I can understand. Like you know, people are. People always throughout the music industry are gonna like take something that they yeah sampling has like. been yeah, yeah sampling, sampling been, is yeah. like an accepted form of making music yeah but um copyright and like getting permission to sample is uh is really important especially with especially the, if you're releasing to sell it yeah yeah like, if you're if, making if you're, money off if, of track. if you're if you're just making something that's kind of underground and you're just like shooting it out for free and you're just and then I think that's what a lot of people do and yeah. like, if they shoot it out for free most people don't have a problem with it yeah. but if you're trying to sell this track. That's when people. That's when the copyright would be like, oh, oh you're making money off this shit. I'll give me the so like, shit. Yeah, yeah, give me my royalties. Like I know some artists, they don't, they don't even let people get permission to sample their yep. shit. Like I think like Stevie Wonder does that, and I think there's uh, there's actually an article of a list of people that like, oh, if you copyright their stuff, like they will come after you. There was a list. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. someone, someone posted. I can't remember where it was. Mm. I gotta pee. That was that was quick. Yep. <laughs> so, are we gonna talk without him, or are we gonna pause it real quick? We, we, no, we can just keep break. it going. All right, or you we wanna we take can, a break? Can, Up to you. If you wanna like smoke or something, or whatever. <clears throat> we'll just keep it rolling. I don't know. We can just keep it rolling. Talk, talk stuff. I mean, I talk some shit, motherfucker. <laughs> I just started watching this fucking anime called Dead Man Wonderland. I heard about that. It, yeah, I saw uh, I saw tidbits of an episode because I was up late night watching Toonami. Like I was, I was watching. It's about this. Um, like high school student who gets framed he gets framed for the slaughter of uh, his classmates spoilers yeah and then he gets um imprisoned at this this place called the dead man wonderland it's basically like it's basically a prison where the inmates have to entertain guests because it's like a theme park too so it's like, almost like battle royale but like instead of just sending the kids off they're like oh if you get if you get arrested you get sent to here for the entertainment yeah like battle royale like it's the yeah it's that whole thing battle yeah. royale and hunger games except yeah. this one is just it's just based at this like amusement park. They even have the the collar around their necks where if they fuck up, they, you know that shit like you know offs you and whatever. But it seems really. What's the name of this again? Dead, Dead Man, Man Wonderland. Wonderland. It's on Netflix. Oh, I gotta check that out. It's yeah, pretty it's real, cool. It's pretty interesting. Like pretty gruesome too. Yeah. I just wish I had more time to fucking watch yeah. shit like that. Speaking of which, okay, so <clears throat> I, I was all, like since middle school, I was always a big Inuyasha fan. Right, and I've I, never seen you. Oh my show. god, you gotta watch I've it! I've never watched. You gotta it. watch. He's like a demon cat. Yeah, he's a half, de- right? no, half demon dog. Like uh, Inu, Inu means dog. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. But <laughs> yeah, no, like cat. um, I've always, wa- I, I've always watched it since middle school, and um, I, what do you call it? I, I heard that they had a final act, which was pretty much like the season that would that finished off the whole story and everything. Well, I had to watch it with subtitles on Hulu. To fi- to watch it, and then just after that, <laughs> Toonami goes and finally releases a dubbed version on on it, right? And I'm like, <laughs> really? So if I just waited like maybe like th- three months after I finished or after I watched all this stuff, I could have just saw it on on like Toonami with it dubbed, <laughs> and I was so pissed. I was so pissed, but it was honestly it was worth it. 
it was it was easier getting used to all the, like or getting having to like relearn all the characters' voices and everything. Whereas like now like their dubbed version, the See, Kokomo's that's, voice is like totally yeah, different. Yeah, speaking of the voice, that like that that messes me up. Like if I when I start an anime, if I start it dubbed. I can't watch it subbed. Like, it just fucks with me listening to the voices all weird. And if I start yeah. it subbed, I can't turn around and start listening to it. Like, I, one of my favorite animes of all time was Roni Kenshin. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. I tried it watching samurai, it. samurai, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I tried watching it uh, subbed. Yeah. And I, I couldn't do it. I was yeah. like, no, I'm not happening. The other one that uh, happened was recently. Like, I never got to see the, the all the final episodes of Roni Kenshin because yeah. I, I ended up falling out of the scene before, uh, before they got dubbed over. Yeah. And apparently... What happened? Because now they're all on Hulu. What happened was what? Yeah, yeah they're all on Hulu. You can watch all your anime. Yeah, I can't. I can't watch it because what happens is the new dubbed versions yeah. are different. Different voices. Not just different oh. voices, but they've even changed some of the names. Like uh, Kaoru was one of the main characters, yeah. Miss Kaoru, right. uh, Kaoru Sama, yeah. uh, Dono. Yeah. Uh, she is now just called uh, like Christy or something like that. What? Yeah, no, it's like some really ridiculous shit. And I was like, this just totally fucked up this anime oh, for me, and I can't man. watch it anymore. No, that does suck. I mean, it was like, <clears throat> I mean, the thing is, when I was watching Inuyasha, like with its sub or with its subtitled and everything, it was like, I was like, oh man, this is gonna be weird. So what I would do is like, as I'm reading the the subtitles, I would just try to picture their voices. Right, like trying to you're remember. reading it in their voice. Yeah, like I'm reading it in their voice. Kind of like you know when you read anything that like Morgan Freeman would say, like yeah. you you somehow his voice comes to mind, and he's yeah. like, you know, you guys ever seen that one that that meme they did or something like that? Like it was just like he ended it with yeah, titty sprinkles. And I haven't <laughs> seen that one. It was like something like, no, it was like yeah, the picture of Morgan Freeman, and they had this text of, like right next to it, and it was like you read the text, and it was you, like as you're reading this right now. Like, studies show that when you see a picture of a person, you tend to associate their voice with reading the text. And then they go, like, all the way down, and you read all this stuff, and then it just ends with titty sprinkles. And, like, <laughs> I swear to God, when titty I read sprinkles. that, I was like, titty sprinkles. Like, I heard Morgan Freeman. Titty right? sprinkles, yeah. <laughs> like, it was so fucking hilarious. <clears throat> uh, so, um, I'm lost. <coughs> Where were we? Um, we were talking about trans and um, tugging heartstrings. Jason going to the bathroom. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. I have to drain the fucking main vein. Drain the main vein. God, All right, Jason's him. got to unleash the sea monster. Drain the sea. I fucking forgot. Release the kraken. <laughs> more, more like release the guppy. Oh, that's fucked up. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's talk about like our music process, like with making a track. What do you guys like? What's the kind of mindset you you put yourselves into before you start making music? Well, first I need my coffee. <laughs> oh yeah, number one. So, what coffee. kind of coffee do you drink? Coffee. Anything with caffeine. I just, I just need something with caffeine. <clears throat> like, yeah. Because I thought I used to be able to work good at night. Like that's how, that's how when me and Colsey first started, we would, we would just practice. Like I would just get like a friggin', what was it? I used to finish work as a security guard, yeah. and I used to come to grab two steel oh, reserves, yeah. and then we just, I just head up to oh, your place, and we would just, reserve. and we would just mix that's together. That's another thing you need. Like if you want a really good, okay, if you're gonna be late at night, drink. And then go studio because then your mind is just so free that you can just release any melody and well, sound. Don't, well, don't, well, don't get don't get don't wasted, get wasted. But I mean, but you want to get into a nice relaxed so mood. Everyone, much drink everyone, half has, everyone, your everyone, everyone has their own process for doing it. Yeah. And then later on, I've discovered that like I work a lot better in the morning time. Yeah. yeah like yeah, around, yeah. like early morning to like midday. Once it's six o'clock at night, I'm like, I want a beer. Like, yeah. I want to have a fucking beer. Yeah. I'm a night person when it comes to making music, but lately with um like my day job and stuff, man, it's. It's been tough, like getting having. I'm just so tired at home, and when you're tired, you just kind of want to relax and stuff. So yeah. that's why I haven't been be haven't been able to produce as much as I used to. But yeah, I'm definitely a night person, and sometimes I, don't know, I guess it depends on my mood in the morning. If I'm not hungover, see, I can't be like drunk as fuck the night before and then like go into a studio session in the morning because you gotta recover. So that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I'm I think trying not to like. The hard way too, too. I'm not trying to like drink. <laughs> As much if I know I want to make music, I'm not trying, you know, try to get shit faced, stay sober. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard. <laughs> Tough, but I, I mean, like that, like I was saying earlier, that coconut water, hydrating as hell, man. You drink one of those before you go to bed, and you drink one when you wake up. You can, you might have like a minor headache, but you'll feel ten times better than. And you some eight hundred milligram ibuprofen that I saw. That too, that <laughs> that works yeah. a whole lot too. Got the load of those at home because my mom has migraines. 
Oh, oh never right. yeah. So like the hangover medicine, like if I'm hungover, I just go dig into like Oop. my mom's medicine closet. <laughs> <laughs> so what I do, I'll pop like two of these and I'm fucking flowing like a G. Like last <laughs> night never happened. <laughs> Fuck. How much I drink last night? Nah, I'm feeling good right now. That's live. It's so <laughs> good. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, no, I think every, every, everybody has their own different process. I know, like, if I'm going to do it in the morning, like, it's got to be either energy drink or coffee. But, like, in the evening, like, let's say, like, you know, I just had my day. I want to go home. and I, like, But I want to work on something. Or, like, sometimes I'll just be, like, I'll have a cigarette. I'll go outside and have a cigarette. And, like, I just, I just, I actually got this from, from, um, from Saint, one of our boys, our, our boy David. Um, he, uh, like, he, one time he was, like, dude, just step outside. Take a deep breath and just look around you. Look around you. Like, look how... Just enjoy the beauty around you. Even if it's your own house, you know it's Yeah, you know this yeah. shit, but enjoy the beauty that there's, is around there's, you. There's some dog shit. And oh. there's a fucking, there's <laughs> like, a nah, like, take a moment to appreciate... Take a moment to appreciate... Take a moment to appreciate, like, your environment. I mean, yeah. if you think about it, we live in fucking Hawaii. Yeah. Like, sometimes I stop and think, and I go outside and I look, and I'm like, yo, I'm in fucking Hawaii, man. People are trying to come here. People are always talk about, like, they're trying to leave Hawaii to try and make it. You know, oh, yeah. outside of Hawaii, but I feel like Hawaii is like the perfect place to like get that creativity going because of where we're at in the environment we're in. Well, it's right. not it's not the 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 physical surroundings that. <laughs> Just trying to, <laughs> trying to count this. It's not the physical surroundings that <clears throat> make me want to like. I, I want to leave Hawaii too. Yeah, but uh, I I love it here. This place will always be home, and um, it, it's <coughs> like one of the things that, that has always struck me. It was one of my first jobs that I got back after I was in the Marines. Was as a limo driver, and I drove oh god all dude. around the island. And <clears throat> while yes, that job sucked, and I quit. One of my favorite things <coughs> was when I wasn't carrying passengers, and I was just riding around with the windows down. And I was like driving up North Shore, and just seeing the sights oh, and whatnot. Yeah. And I was like, man, I've never oh, like yeah. just stopped and looked at these before. So I was just, we're like, born and raised here. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we yeah. never like it never dawned on us. But like the the big reason why I want to leave Hawaii is because there's a ton of impediments. To like actually getting somewhere in a creative yeah. business. Yeah, yeah, because like, we're so isolated. I yeah. guess. Mm. I mean, like, it's until hard. recently, big acts weren't coming here, so it was hard to get seen by anyone. Uh, if you were getting big here, it was almost impossible to go and be big elsewhere because yeah. the tastes that are here are well, like what makes you big here is not going to make you popular in the mainland or the rest of the world necessarily. Yeah, M- usually not at all. I wouldn't say that. I mean, it. it just, this, this is this is he's talking about, like in the past. Like now, oh, it's not. Okay. It's not yeah, yeah, now it's okay. I thought, yeah. Yeah, in the past, I would say yeah, yeah, I would agree. Like it's it's a lot like, better it's, now. It's, it's getting better, better now. Yeah, for sure. Now it's definitely like um. What do you call? Mm-hmm. I wasn't brought to this to my attention until I was having a few beers with my dad. Is um, what do you call it? Hawaiian music, like not just like you know like old traditional Hawaiian music, but like all the the reggae and stuff. The Hawaiian reggae that's been coming out lately is actually be- becoming pretty big in Japan right now. Yeah, like it's branching out there and it's becoming pretty big, and it's like, and that's crazy. I mean, I can understand. Okay, you know, Hawaii and and uh, Japan have had a, a lot ever since you know who knows when, right? And the the connection has been great. So I wouldn't like doubt that that's gonna happen. But I mean, if it's something like that's that, I mean, I guess not outrageous, but something you wouldn't really. Consider. I'll tell you what, <clears throat> like I'll consider this to be a good place to like start up and become this. You know, I'll consider this a great place to like try and make it to go big yeah. when a Hawaiian song is number one on the German charts. That, yeah, no, that is true. Like I it, it just the, the reach doesn't go there. Yeah, uh, and I think the thing is the culture here. That's what's popular, mm-hmm. and I mean it's getting less and less. There's starting to be more hip hop, more rock, more EDM. More comedy, more acting and improvisation, more all kinds of different, like the, the, the actual artists. I mean, the, the, the painters and whatnot that have been here, they have had some famous stuff that has gone huge. And then they just kind of like retire. They're like, oh, I'm in Hawaii. I'm just going to retire now off this one painting. Yeah. And that's one of the things that, that it's kind of the trap of Hawaii. Like I've said this for a long time. Like if you want to retire, uh, go to Hawaii or Florida. Yeah. Like, if you want to like go somewhere and like just do nothing, live in a great place and be be okay the rest of your life, Hawaii is phenomenal with that. But if you want to work and you want to like produce stuff, wh- whatever it is, you want to like go out and make something, yeah. Hawaii is not the best place to do it because there's too many. One for me, there's a lot of distractions. Like you end up doing this, you end up going doing this, go to the beach, do that, whatever. Uh, two, 
there, there, the opportunity, at least from what I've seen, hasn't been there until recently. Like now, mm-hmm. we're starting to get a lot more opportunity. Mm-hmm. Like uh, uh, in the comedy scene, where we've been bringing down a few of the bigger names. We've had yeah. Ben Cronenberg. We've had, uh, <clears throat> we've had. Uh, now, I'm, of course, now as soon as I'm trying to say it, I'm blanking on a whole bunch well, of people's names. How many this is, hasn't uh, Cat Williams came down? Yeah, Maybe Cat that, Williams Daniel came down. Uh, Tosh, yeah, came Daniel, down. Tosh, Daniel Tosh, Tosh came. was fucking amazing. Which yeah, that was that he's he's been one of my like idols within comedy. Like I've loved his comedy for almost 15 years now. He is a phenomenal comic, and getting to see him live is this incredible thing. Uh, sadly, we didn't. He didn't get to see any of us. Like he, he, because of his schedule and a few other, you know, just little things having to do with the way his shows were, because he had another one right on Maui, like the next day and all this stuff. Yeah. Like he really couldn't have time to like actually talk to any of the local comics. But like when we've brought down, like some of the local comics have brought down, like Ben Cronenberg, Neil Hamburger. Um, we're bringing down um, Rory Scovel in May. Uh, like they're going to actually get to sit here and interact with us. We've had uh, a ton of different, like some of the, like if you're into comedy, you, you know these names. Yeah. Uh, uh, who else have we had? Just like we, we brought, we've actually brought down one of the, uh, uh, a, a podcast called the uh, Comedy Film Nerds. They did a local, uh, uh, this was their first like satellite uh, comedy film nerds that they didn't yeah. do at their own place. They came out to Hawaii and they did a live comedy film nerds here in Hawaii with us. And that was always really cool. And that was fun to see that happen. No, they're actually one of the organizations, uh, one of the organizers of uh, L.A. PodFest, which is a festival about podcasting. And they were, while we were here, we were talking, because there's a couple of local podcasts and local comedians doing podcasts and whatnot. And they were like, oh, you know, would you guys ever be interested in doing like a PodFest in Hawaii? Yeah. And that was one of the things that we ended up talking about. And it's creating opportunity that wasn't there before. Yeah. But for a very long time, was- none of this opportunity was there. Like the only way to get seen was to go to America or go to somewhere where yeah. this thing was big yeah. and like hopefully you you knew somebody or they knew someone that knew you. Yeah. There had to be some sort of networking yeah. going on in order for that to <clears> and it, it wasn't it was non existent. Well I think with the internet nowadays it's a lot easier for people like if you're an artist like struggling out here in Hawaii trying to do something, it's a lot easier to be noticed outside yeah. of Hawaii with the internet and well, at the same time, like, I, I agree. Like, yeah, there's a lot more platforms for you to put out there, but mm-hmm. you also have to compete with all the hogwash that's out there, too. Yeah. Like, you might be fucking amazing. Like, you are the greatest thing since sliced bread, but you're surrounded by ducks quacking. Yeah. And that's and just I like, like that quacks analogy. And quacks and quacks and, and ducks, quacks and, ducking. And ducks and, and ducks quacks and ducking. No, and ducks eat bread. <laughs> Jason going deep again. Oh. I felt that one. Man, that was like in my guts. Oh my God. Damn. Well, once one like success success story that I've seen recently, um, bringing it back to music, um, my homeboy Mr. Carmack, who is yeah. a producer out here, he pretty much all he did was make music for like a couple years. And he was based out of here, and that's all he did. And he put out projects on the internet. And eventually, this LA-based collective known as Selection noticed his music and decided to like kind of spread his music out in LA. And then from there, <coughs> his music kind of blew up based on the fact that it was just good music. So it it turns into this like whole network of thing. Like he's out here in Hawaii making music, and people listen to his stuff in LA, and people are just like telling other people, like, "Yo, yo, check this cat out." And now this dude like blew up. He like played EDC last year. He played at Hard Summer. Nice, dude. He yeah. um he's on a he's a he's nice a, guy too. When I got to meet him last time he was here, dude. Yeah, like, yeah. No, maybe not the last time, but the last last time. When he, super cool, down to earth guy. Cool. Like super humble I, I had and to help him set up that just a fucking control. creative yeah. genius. And I think that's a case where um the quality of the content he kind of let it speak for himself because he's kind of known for being kind of like elusive. Like the way he manages his SoundCloud is really random. He'll just put shit out there and then take it down just cause. And then he'll collect all of that stuff that he's like, let people sample, put it into like a, puts it up on Bandcamp as like a, a project and then people buy it. But yeah, I think also the quality of the content can like speak for itself yeah. and, you know, and let that shit go viral. He's doing a tour right now. He's like a three continent tour. Wow. He started out wow. he I think he started out in like New Zealand and Australia. Then he's 
U.S. and then Europe too. So, That's incredible. That's yeah, and he's crazy. from here. So like every time I think about it, yo, can I make it out of Hawaii? I think about like him, um, Mr. Carmack. Like it's possible with a lot of work and dedication. Yeah. Like this dude pretty much just made music for two years and he worked as like a dishwasher at um, what is that uh, that beer place in town? Hello, King, what was it? Hello, King Street what was it? Gas Pub. I don't know what it is. Some, some dash, thing. dash Gas. No, 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 no. That's that's a ward. Um, but what was it called? Pint and Jigger. Oh, yeah. I think shit. I think he oh, worked yeah. as a dishwasher yeah, over my there. Friend and, was a, my friend's a whiskey connoisseur over there. Yeah, and now he's like, you know, he's making money off doing what he loves, getting to travel to all these like dull places and stuff. So it is possible to have Hawaii as like your home base for creative expression, yeah. I guess. Yeah, well, and the part of it too is if you want to get bigger. You have to leave Hawaii for at least a little while. That's who, yeah, yeah. He he even like moved out to LA to pursue yeah. his like music. Got to do a multiple home bases kind of thing going like on. Diplo plays this stuff. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he's been he has releases on like Mad Decent and shit, and that shit like trips me. I like yo, I've been, I got drunk with this dude at his crib. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. All right, so well, Anderson Silva won the fight. How do you win? Not by knockout. Oh. Uh, they said. They well, said it was close. Well, a lot well, of people what, online what, are saying yeah. that Nick Diaz should have won. Like he got robbed. No, nah, it's okay. Uh, from what from what my home my homeboy said, and this is all just opi- this is just opinions. Uh, Anderson, I asked him, "Oh, who won?" Anderson. It wasn't the best he looked, but Diaz wasn't really doing shit. <coughs> a lot of taunting and dirty boxing. Uh-huh. And then he's like, I asked him, "Is like, oh, no, no knockout? Like, damn, it's kind, it's kind of sucks." He's like, "Nah." Like, Silva looked kind of rusty. Diaz wasn't coming forward. You know, Anderson Silva's kind of just, like, a defensive fighter, mainly. Yeah, yeah. Or from what I've... Well, well, he has the most noticed, knockouts, right, in the UFC. I heard. I heard I he has the most knockouts. I don't know. Who? Diaz? Oh, no, no. Um, Silva. Silva. I don't yeah, know. I gotta double check that. <clears throat> and then... And I was just like, oh, but he won my points. He's like, yeah, he was beating up Diaz in the third round. The last round was the best round. I was like, they, they said, like, that they were just... Doing, they were completely going at it. There's no more showboating. Like, they finally fucking went at it. Oh. So I was just like, fuck... Cause I, I was expecting a knockout. I guess maybe we would have heard some fireworks going off, but I mean that's only for Pacquiao though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the it, yeah, that's the Hawaii thing when Pacquiao wins. So I, I heard, heard the fights going heard, down. Now. Yeah, the, yep. so the May- Mayweather supposedly and, yeah. Yeah. Just waiting for the signatures. Yep. After they met up, like, you see those pictures of like them them at the the heat. Dude, they, the they, heat yeah, they said it was the first time they've actually ever talked to each other. Yeah. Because it's always been done with their managers or just posting shit or whatever. But they've, this is the first time they've actually met, like, face-to-face and talked to each other. That was it. Oh, what if they it's just, like, like, they were just, like, fucking just started fighting out <laughs> port side, dude. That There's was the fight the we all waited for. Fight. <laughs> fucking world star, dude. What a broke world, world star. World star. World fucking star. fuck out me when they're at a fucking basketball game, dude. <laughs> just swing and blows. Nobody can fuck with them because they're too scared of getting hit. <laughs> But two of the like, fucking stop, best, stop, no, no, two, stop, of, stop, stop, no, two no. of the best fucking boxers in the world going at it at a fucking basketball game, dude. Oh ultimate street God. fight. Oh, let's make that happen. <laughs> <Fuck. laughs> what were they trying to do it at the MGM? <laughs> Fuck that. Let's do it on a basketball court. <laughs> <laughs> They're not even playing basketball. <laughs> nope. All right, sorry to interrupt with that last one, but no, that no, was, that was just, it, it's supposed to be. We had to. It was that, I mean, we got into the culture of the the fight scene out here. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you guys think about the fight scene out here? I mean, like, it's like, insane. I don't know. I've never been to like a local fight. I, I, I went to one when except I was except like in high school. Like, and, you know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Fucking, oh my god, that fart, 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 when uh, yeah, when Soho was open, they had one. Yeah, in they had Soho. the live. They had the MMA fights, and that shit was crazy. Like, I bet. like the first time just watching that shit, and I was just like, damn. Like these, like I only see this shit on TV, and I'm standing. And I'm like, damn. Like, so like some, I, I didn't realize some of our like. I mean, I, I know our local, like our local homies can bang, but it's just like when you actually see it, like right in front of your face, and it's in a cage, and there's only one person to, to separate them. Not like everyone pushing around or anyone dirty mobbing. None of that shit. It's yeah, just like yeah, yeah. they're actually fighting, and it's just this is what they do for a living. It's like holy shit. What happened like, to the like? They used to have events at the fucking um Blazedale, right? Rumble on the Rock or something like that. I don't know. I think, I think so. They, I think they, they still to... have that. I don't know. I, don't, I, I rarely watch TV anymore. Yeah. Oh, I see. Hey, fuck. The, the most TV I watch is Netflix. I'd love to go to a fucking... I'd love right. to go to like a UFC in like Brazil or something because I heard that's like the craziest place to go watch a UFC because of all the all the Brazilian fans are just like nuts. Yeah. Well, you think about it. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> fuck you. Mm-hmm. I want to put out, I want to my no, but if you think about it, it's just like, I mean, some of the best... Some of the best UFC fighters are coming out of like Brazil now. I mean, like yeah. Anderson Silva, like, like 
that's the only one that pops into my head. I know there's a shitload of them. Sorry, but like I know there's like a shitload of fighters coming. It's too out bad of Joe Rogan isn't here. He'd be able to just like list some shit off. Like who? <laughs> Joe Rogan. Oh yeah, because because we know Joe Rogan like that. I don't know. We're trying to actually bring him down to do comedy. Maybe do a podcast here. Has he ever been here? I know he's been here, but not for comedy. No, he has he, he came here for a fight at some point. Yeah, yeah. But nice. uh, he hasn't been here for comedy. We we now that we're getting more and more. Uh, bigger names in comedy. We're we're we're, lo- we're starting to go like okay. You know, at first it started off was like okay, who can we get? Yeah. That we you know we know and who do we want to get? Now it's like, who do we want to get? Mm-hmm. Like I said, getting getting Rory Scovel. Like uh, again, if you if you know comedy, Rory Scovel is a huge name. Uh, getting Rory Scovel, getting Ben Cronenberg and guys like that. These mm-hmm. are these are some guys that are coming up in in comedy and they're gonna like yeah. these are the like if this was the '90s, these guys would have a TV show by now. Yeah. Uh, there. I mean, Rory Scovel is on a TV show for fuck's sake. He's on a TBS show. It's really good. Uh, What's but, it called? Uh, the <coughs> the bottom floor or the top floor, something like that. Never heard of it. Look at yeah, that. T- TBS look show. Up. He's funny on it. Yeah. It's it's not a bad show. I've watched a few episodes, but uh, like a lot of you guys are saying, like we just don't have time to do stuff, so I, I haven't been able to keep up with it. So. <clears throat> But no, we're we're looking to get more. One Joe Rogan's on on my wish list for people to bring down Yo, here. Oh yeah, put me on that. Yeah, for sure. That's a he's like one of the reasons I started um listening to podcasts and was kind of inspired to do this do this podcast thing because all I do at work is pretty much listen to his podcast and like at first I uh I had a vague idea that he was like a comedian but I've I've always known him from the UFC so I thought he was just yeah. like some of those like like meathead like just talk about he'd probably just like talk yeah. about like the UFC. You know, on his podcast, I actually but then, didn't even know he was a comedian until you just mentioned it. Yeah, he no, was he's not, a huge all, comedian. The, all I saw him in was in his actually, um, shit. You know Carlos Mencia, right? Yeah. yeah. You know about the huge controversy with him stealing jokes? No. It was a giant controversy, huge. and Joe Rogan was the one who brought it up because he was stealing Joe Rogan's jokes. Oh, that's fucked up. Damn. Yeah. So I mean, they. I, I think it's pretty m- much ended mostly Carlos Mencia's career, yeah, right? Yeah, like that's why he doesn't do stuff anymore because no one's like no one will no one will touch him because he's he's been and, and the thing is like. Joe Rogan has put it out like he and Joe Rogan. <laughs> what happened? Part of the thing that happened was Joe Rogan was like, "Oh, you know, come out and just just admit it, or you know, at least say something about this." And uh, he just went vehemently against. It. Like he was like, "No, I'd never steal." Da da da. Not even by accident. This and that. And like every comedian will tell you, you know, uh, there's a lot of comedians that will that won't listen to other comedians because they don't want to accidentally get a thought in their head and do a joke that's similar to mm-hmm. someone else's. Uh, that makes sense. And uh, most comedians will tell you, you know, that happens sometimes. And if someone says, hey, you're doing my joke, you're like, oh, shit, I didn't fucking realize that. I'm going to stop doing that joke. Or, or you're going to be like, oh, shit, dude, I, I actually did steal that. And then you're shamed and you're kicked out of the fucking thing. But, like, the one thing you don't do is just be like, fuck you. No, it's my joke. It's like, I've, I did it better than you or this or that. You don't do that kind of shit. And that's what Carlos Mencia fucking did. And he's like, well, Yikes. fuck him. So, dun, dun, dun. Yo, and not just like he's not just like a UFC commentator and comedian, but he's also into a bunch of like trippy stuff. Like um, one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, he's a huge. Yeah, no, he's, he's a oh, huge God. advocate for entheogens. Was he and, on that DMT? Um, on the spirit molecule, the documentary. Yeah, yes, he was. He was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, a lot of interesting guests oh. on there, like fucking people like Neil deGrasse Tyson have been on his podcast. Oh yeah, no, it's fantastic. Like, yeah. like, like I love listening to his podcast. It's one of the ones that goes to the top of my my playlist every time one comes out. Yeah, but it's, enough, it's good stuff. But enough of sucking Rogan's dick right now. <laughs> <laughs> on to sucking Chris Hardwick's because he's the one with a network that can really like do stuff <laughs> for us. Yeah, <coughs> Nerdist, go see it. I actually want to ring him out too. Hey, yeah, see, I knew it. We we're gonna get Hoa coming through here. That's my dog, people. Where you going? What you doing? She's trying to get around and she can't because she's halfway blind. Oh, there you go. There you go, Hoa. All right. So how how far into this are we? What, what are we looking at time wise? Um, hour twenty. All right. Holy let's shit. start. Let's start wrapping it up because we're we're doing. Last one was about an hour and a half. Yeah, I, see, yeah, yeah. I figured we stick around the hour half mark until yeah. until we fig- figure out something better. So let's start wrapping this up. Uh, do does astronauts by night have anything to promote? Uh, as of right now, we're still waiting on a date for the actual release of Save Me From Falling, and that's pretty much all the news we have right now. Besides the fa- all all the other tracks that we have are still 
waiting to get they're, they're still waiting to get approved by the label so that's what we're yeah. waiting on too and so right now you guys are just working on music we're just, mostly we're just are, gonna keep are you still there. releasing that <clears throat> podcast is that uh has that been on hiatus Cosmic for a little while it's been on a hiatus a little bit because yeah i'm working on the next episode of that so um you can you can go subscribe to the episodes that are already up by going to um the itunes store itunes store and searching cosmic velocity What's going to be the address for the website? Is the website gonna is going to up soon. The website is going to be astronautsbynight.com. And um, yeah, it should be up soon. So all of our stuff will be there. And hopefully we'll you know get to making some more content for people. More released content. Yeah, you know, like yeah. behind the scenes content of like stuff, uh, like samples of us like working on a track, what we're up to and stuff. Mm-hmm. So people can get a more personal connection to us. All right. Uh, so let's go with uh, Twitters, Facebooks. Uh, yeah, uh, for our final thing, is, Instagram. Uh, is add all our social media. We got our Facebook at facebook.com slash astronauts by night. Our Twitter is astronauts underscore BN. And then our Instagram is astronauts underscore by underscore night. And what's your guys' personal Twitters? and, and Mine whatnot? is tron underscore D underscore B. And, and then my Instagram is tron underscore astronauts underscore by underscore night. Yeah, I'm pretty really sure long. I'm going to shorten that shit pretty soon. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think you, I think you really do. <laughs> like, TJ, what you got? Well, uh, let's see. Um, I mean, I do have my original Jew joke thing, but I haven't touched that since I joined Astronauts by Night, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, as far as for, like, Instagram. Hit it up anyway. Throw it out there. Well, it's, uh, yeah, it's just Facebook.com slash Jew Jove. Um, I, I believe that's it should still be that. Um, then for, like, my, my Instagram, it's going to be TJ underscore Jew Jove. And for those who don't know how to spell that, that's... J O V E for Jove. Okay, I know. I'm pretty sure you guys all know how to spell Jude. So. Oh, say hi. Yo, yo, yo. Saying what up to the dog. <clears throat> yeah, but that yeah, that's pretty much the only social media I I <laughs> in touch with because I don't know. I don't. I'm not really a Twitter kind of guy. <laughs> well, you should, man, because these people are gonna want to see what's good. You know what I mean? I need to start getting back into Twitter myself. Yeah. Cozy. Yeah, what you do like what you got to? For a while. A little bit. Oh, yeah, I fell off. Hey, listen. I'm very active on social media. So, um, yeah, give, it, give us social media. Give us any events you got coming up. Okay, the next Greenleaf Check event will be happening on the last Thursday of March, which is March 26th, I believe. A lot of dope DJs, and we might we might feature uh, uh, MC Act. And you guys can follow me on all social media, at John Cozy. That's my Twitter, Instagram. Fucking look me up on Google, done. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm saying. What do we got coming up with Greenleaf Check? Greenleaf? I just said it. I, just, <laughs> dude, I didn't hear a date. I'm sorry. I fucked that up. March 26th. March 26th. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. I'm an idiot. Sorry. Fucking his shit like fucked with me and then Jason fucking with me. Oh, my and dog. you can also follow our official Aloha Broha podcast Twitter account at, whoop, whoop. Uh, uh, at Aloha Broha underscore GLC. And you can follow us on Tumblr. Where I'll be putting up like show notes and the episodes and stuff at Aloha Broha Podcast dot Tumblr dot com. Ho- hopefully get a URL soon. Also go to greenleafcheck.com to check out anything going on with Greenleaf Check. Also we yes. we're posting the 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 podcast up there. We're up on iTunes. We're yes. also got a Tumblr going on. You can find all those links to all those things on the Aloha Broha uh, podcast uh, Facebook page. Yes. So just search Aloha Broha. Uh, I'm Ben Hamilton. Trip has 808 on Twitter, T R I P H A Z 808. Uh, you can hit me up on there anytime. Uh, some events that I got going on uh, coming up this Wednesday, February 4th, there's Comedy U Wednesday Night Showcase at Anna, O'Bri- uh, Anna O'Brien's, the, the old Anna, Anna Bananas. Uh, we got that oh, one yeah, going. Oh, yeah, they let you smoke in there. I love yeah, that place. It's fantastic. <laughs> I think that might have changed. I think that might have changed. Yeah, now. DJ they, over they that let you, time, they let they you smoke downstairs. <laughs> I, think, I think they let you smoke downstairs, but upstairs, I don't know if they let you do it anymore. Maybe go there and find out. Uh, and then also uh, on Friday, February 6th, Jose Dynamite and Friends, first Friday at O'Toole's Irish Pub in Chinatown. Go there, check out some really great Dude, comedians doing awesome. their things. That place is so chill. Yeah. All right, then. So. I think that's it. Does anyone else have anything to, to say, share, do, oh, just want take to say a poop? Thanks to all of our fans and all of our followers, and thank you for all the support. We're going to keep trying to make music that makes everyone else happy. Um, I guess we or can say sad sh- or yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah, that pulls your heartstrings. <laughs> yeah, it goes that pulls deep. your heartstrings, yeah. It goes deep or whatever. Yeah. But I guess we want to send some thank out <clears> to the promotion groups that have supported us over the past. Uh, Pure Coalition has been good with us. Uh, Wonderland Entertainment is like one of the reasons we got pretty big, too. Started letting us give us residency at 
at their events for a long time. Um, Odin Works helped us out a lot. Who else? Workhouse, bitch. Yes, yes, Workhouse. yes. Workhouse. Fuck. <laughs> Workhouse. Um, our old, our old clothing sponsors. Or actually, I think they're still our clothing sponsors. I haven't talked to them in a while. Well, um, I need to get some shirts from them, man. Yeah. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Majors. Keep me fresh. Majors. Yeah, the majors, and then um, uh, Kapili Denim. We want to thank them too. Yep. My homeboy Nico Kapili's um jean company. Shit's sick brand. as fuck. Salvage denim. Thick as fuck. Straight from the Philippines. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Also, for anyone who's uh, who's all of our listeners out there and our viewers on YouTube and whatnot, please, uh, you know, hit us up. Right, right. Post on our on the Aloha Broha Facebook page. Hit us up on Twitter. Give us any. Tell us what you want to hear us talk about. Uh, ask us questions and whatnot. We'll address them during the episodes and yes. whatnot. So, please be interactive. We like to to know. Like we're doing this because we want you guys to be able to help. Uh, we want to help you guys find stuff that you want to hear about and see. So let us know what that is. Yep. Boom. Signing out. Right. Thank you for listening. Bye. How's my fake radio voice? <laughs> better, better than that. mine. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for. <laughs> I feel like I just. I feel like I'll, that's I'll, not oh, me right. though. You no, know, you remember I when feel I feel like that's not me though? You know, I like I put it on for this shit. I'm You're listening like, to thankful. Jason and the Spooge on Hot 96.9. Oh, no, dude. You dude. Remember, no, I remember when like I like I used to have like no MC skills at all, and like everyone tried to give me the mic, and it's be like, oh god, like it was fucking horrible. Oh I no, I, the Injuna Beats tour <clears throat> in Kona was the worst. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's because he got fucking wasted. Did, yeah, dude. dude. Like, I felt so bad for like jump like, and I was okay. like, yeah, we recorded a badass set, and Let then me. like you hear me like trying to Let MC that shit. On Let me try to sign this off as just myself without the. Thank you for you know that thing. Okay, okay. okay, ready, guys. This is just me. Three, two, one. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>